Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Hey, 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 welcome to the show, the Richard Listens on Sports Show, and we are a gang here. I'm the host, Peter Sobey. Over there is the doctor, Dr. Richard Ulberger. Hey, hey. And you might notice that we have some uh, some youths with us, some young ones. Some hawks. Who do we have here, Dr. Richard? We've got, we've got my boys. We've got David and Michael. <laughs> wow, welcome. To Richard listens on sport, David and Michael. Now, of course, right now Michael doesn't have headphones, but he can occasionally just grab his father's mic and say whatever he needs to say, get it off his chest. Is there anything <laughs> you is there anything you need to get off your chest to your father right now before we even get started? Is there something like that's been burning inside you that you uh, felt like you didn't have the right moment to say to your father and now you have the strength of numbers so you can just be like, Dad. I ain't gonna take it no more. <laughs> or raising your allowance. Hey, how about um, there? Nothing really. Just I love him and that oh, I appreciate him. Oh, I'm out of here. You hear that? So <laughs> hear that? Somebody paid him off. That's, so that's training right there. That's executive training. Yep. And so you also <laughs> hear another voice. That's our guest. We'll introduce him in one moment here. And Jarvis, we're good if we want to go ahead and introduce the guest, right? Like or with transition stuff. So. You've been hearing his voice. It's a it's a really a really fascinating guest. We're so excited I'll to have stop, him here stop. live in the studio. And he's someone. Well, I'll I'll let Doctor Richard explain how he met him. But for now, I will introduce that Angels guy, Douglas De Palma. That is him. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. He is decked out in his Angels gear. And now I just will say before we get into why is that Angels guy, how Richard met him. Uh, we're also double excited because he's a youth coach and mentor, and, and yes. he's got sons that are heavily involved in sports, and Richard's got his sons here who are involved in sports, so it's going to be fun to talk about that as well. So um, before, someone's cell phone might be on? Too close to the mic, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, try that. But also, before we get into, we are going to have our fitness wellness minute with Caitlin coming up. She's been waiting patiently. Uh, I do apologize that we're starting the show so late. I actually, sometimes, some of you might not know, I use a wheelchair. You don't necessarily see it on the show, but I'm sure you know it. And the backrest fell off of my wheelchair, and I was still in Beverly Hills. So we fixed it. I made it here, starting the show, you know, 12, 13 minutes late. But well, we're, we're, we're thankful that you're safe and that you made it. And uh, yes. we also now learned that our guest doubles as a technical yeah, handy expert. So this, there might be a show after this. About could be, it. could be. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with tools and welders and stuff. So. And so, so we're excited to hear from Caitlin. We'll do that in just a moment. And before we tell the story of, uh, of our guests, I also want to hear a word from, we are really excited that we've got like a baseball expert in the studio with us, young David Olberger. Say hi, David. Hi. Talking to the mic. There you go. Hi. <laughs> and now, this is so exciting because this kid can talk baseball left, right, up, down, 24-7. Unbelievable. So I am looking forward to hearing some baseball facts from young David. So that's exciting. So Yeah. So I, I just wanted to, you know, share, Peter, that, that ball hawking, and I'm interested in learning about it, um, you know, ties in to our guest today, and I'm, I'm hoping to hear his journey and his experience and I hope we invite those people out there who are now participating in this passionate, fun way of attending baseball games and being a part of the action. But uh, what ties into our previous conversations about youth sports and, and listening to your kids, and sometimes we're like, well, well, do I push the agenda? Do I put them in a sport they want to be in? Or how do I follow what, what they're interested in? And what I love about this topic is that this summer – when the kids were on break, all of a sudden, uh, you know, David was on YouTube watching a ton of, uh, I'm sure we'll get into the Zach Hample and a ton of his videos and about people attending games and really making it 
this whole science behind catching foul balls and, you know, understanding, you know, more than like physics of where people hit home runs, where particular players you should position yourself for fans actually moving themselves around before the game and after the game and making the baseball park and batting practice fun again. So it became something where, I, you know, every once in a while I'd look over and say, what are you watching over there? Because they seem to be at every stadium and paying it. So it's been a great journey. And I'm sure we'll get into some of the destinations we were able to hit this summer um, to be able to pay attention to um, what's exciting for them and to, uh, as uh, as Michael can attest to, kind of we've been chasing him around the park. He, he seems to be leading us around uh, right. and feeling safe and free and fun, and that's the beauty of ball hawking. Amazing. So we have so much to talk about with that, and we're excited to uh, to hear what Douglas has to say about it. But Caitlin has been waiting very patiently over on the East Coast, and we're always, always excited to hear what her fitness wellness tip's going to be. You know, luckily, you know, outside uh, our our hearts do go out to Las Vegas. And um, but luckily, I know there's a hurricane coming, but it feels like the last few days that there's been a respite from disaster per se. So we can take a deep breath about that. But anyway, uh, welcome to the show, Caitlin. <laughs> Hey, Kaylin. Thanks for being bearing with us. Yes. How yeah, no are problem. you doing? Everything is all good now. <laughs> and so you are in Boston right now? I am actually, well, I was in New York and now I'm in New Jersey, so I'm all over the map. Wow. <laughs> well, thank you for hanging in there with us. And um, we're always excited because you are a fitness wellness expert. You are a spokeswoman, an actress, a model. And our listeners and watchers always love what you have to say. So what is your fitness wellness tip for us this week, Caitlin? So I was really thinking about this one, too, because I know with the earthquakes I experienced and all the tragedy in the world we were kind of talking about last week or the week before, what we do when we're you know, faced with a lot of stress. And another thing that I thought of, which many people do do when they face stress, but some people just do it in their normal every day, is either people don't eat or they forget to eat. And having discussion with my family today, actually, some of them didn't really understand why, you know, why is it important that I remember to eat? You know, I feel if I don't eat because I'm not hungry, I'm going throughout the day and I'm going to lose weight in the end or I'm going to lose that stubborn fat that doesn't want to come off. But if you haven't eaten for an extended amount of time, maybe eight hours, that's when you set your body to go off into the starvation mode. So it's actually going to be holding on to all that fat for dear life because it's trying to survive because it thinks it's, you're not able to get your food. So my tip would be is to try to eat a small something every three to four hours of your day, even if it's, you know, a sliced cucumber, because, you know, that doesn't really have a lot of calorie content or nutritional value. But what that's going to do is actually going to rev up your metabolism. So from you eating that cucumber or say maybe eight to 10 almonds would be another great option um, that you're actually going to be um, making your metabolism go faster, resulting in, you know, more weight loss or more efficient metabolism. So I think some people might understand the opposite effect from not eating. So, you know, make sure you're eating something, a healthy option every couple of hours. Wow. That's a great tip. Cause some days I'll just get busy working and mm -hmm. next thing you know, like 10 hours have gone between meals or something. And I eat nothing and then you get ravenous at the end of the night, right? right? You want to eat everything because you've waited all day to eat. That's why Peter loves tater tots and donuts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, winter in LA, I don't know what it is about LA, but they have the best donuts. So sometimes you just have to. That's true. There's a new Randy's Donuts at Century City Mall. Couch. That's true. But it is a good point because sometimes I'll think like, oh, I didn't eat for 10 hours. I'll lose weight. But I had no idea that your body then will actually store fat to survive and you're doing the opposite so really. right and i mean i'm not saying you know go and get fast food you know make the right option and sure. even if you're not hungry i would always suggest like a cucumber is like the perfect thing to keep your metabolism going get a little something to rev that metabolism and you know have it be a pretty neutral effect so so, so real quick what do you do because i see you're out there taking photos on a racetrack or somewhere where there's not like a fresh grocery nearby mm -hmm. 
What what do you do if you have if you're out there a long time and you know? So I definitely always keep some form of you know clean protein, good protein source bar with me at all times. Almonds, pistachios, sunflower seeds, those kind of things. Because if I'm in a hot place or a cold place, it's you know usually I try to buy something that doesn't melt or whatever if I'm on an airplane. But always being prepared and having a go-to snack no matter what your day is planned for. I think that's that's where you find the success. So. Peter, when you're sitting there for 10 hours and you're working, you know, start before you get set up on that computer and have your snack ready and prepared. Right. Ready. I'll have a cucumber. <laughs> Are you being sponsored by like the <laughs> U.S. Board of Cucumbers or something? <laughs> I should be, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, Caitlin, thank you so much for your patience. Thanks for your great tip. And we can't wait to see you live again in two weeks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Come out All and right. join us. Take care. Bye, Caitlin. Bye. All right. What a great tip from Caitlin. And, you know, that kind of like, you know, we have so much to talk about today, but this can lead into like a quick question that I'll give first to uh, to Douglas. And obviously this will go to you too, Dr. Richard, but you spend a lot of time going to games, obviously, with your kids, and that's like a long day. So do you bring, do you plan ahead with snacks and all that sort of stuff or you just get to the park and go to town. Well, see, the, uh, I'm still uh, enamored by the uh, donut and the uh, tater tot. Do you put the tater tot in the hole <laughs> oh, as, that, you, as you eat it? That, that, that's a good idea. Go for that. I like that. <laughs> we can deep fry it and take it to the fair. Think but, about totally. Deep there's, fried not, hash, yeah. there's not many versions of tater tots that Peter would turn away, yeah, I believe. Yeah, totally. There you yeah. go. But no, um, I used to be an amateur bodybuilder. I used to be in phenomenal shape, and I, I concur. Every three four hours, you have to put something in your body. Um, and my oldest goes with me now, and my youngest not so much. But when we go, we come prepared, take granola bars or bring some sunflower seeds or some form of snacks, uh, maybe pick up something on the way. But um, when we go to the stadium, we live an hour and a half away. So, I mean, we are gone. It's an eight-hour easy yeah. day for us. So uh, bring something. Always, you know, always make sure that – you're focused. I mean, if, if you don't eat for three or four hours and your body starts to slow down, your mind starts to slow down too. And that kind of changes the game of, you know, ball hawking, if, if you will. Uh, you, you're off your game. And there's been times when I, I should have had four balls easy and mentally I wasn't there and wasn't able to make the grab. And um, absolutely, will, uh, you know, say that it was probably because I didn't have something in my system and I was more thinking about hunger than I was thinking wow. about the ball. I, I have to give our listeners like a little bit of a, a sensory description yes. of what, see, Douglas is here, he's in the studio, he's he's calm, he can't move. <laughs> There's no <laughs> balls flying in the air. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but first I want to tell you that, that you know, and this is, leads to some questions, maybe follow up for you, Peter, but, you know, the amount of mental acuity going on, like, it's almost as if he has to know who the next batter is. He's trying to know who hits home runs where. And he, and he's tracking all this is what I picked up just from watching one game uh, with Douglas. And he's kind of communicating with some of the other fans, too, oh, about, yeah. about yeah, you know, getting the them hearts. involved in too. Right. Who, you know, where should we be standing? You know, you got to be ready. You know, so you may be in a conversation with someone, but then you got to be ready to move, hike it up 20 feet and get to your spot. So the amount of mental alertness uh, – I'm, I'm interested, you know, if that happens over time, it becomes more natural. But, but there's not a lot of idle time, uh, even to be like getting into a sandwich while while the game is in play. Right. So you got to really get, and then there's batting practice before the game. So you yes. got to really plan it like between batting practice and the game to get your food in. Oh well, with batting practice, you don't have time to think. I mean, because the balls are just flying. My wife knows. Everybody knows knows me that if, if I text BP. Don't bug me for an hour and a half because I'm not going to answer the phone. I have to yeah. share what how I met Douglas because I did not meet him sitting up in a chair. Right. He, he was five people down from me. It was ironic how me. you met. It's it is ironic <laughs> because you know, and this is this is part of the culture that we're talking about. Here you have D David left school, got on a train to go to a game at, at Angel Stadium, his first time getting there, and all he wants to do is is get to batting practice and somehow catch a ball, even though we were kind of in the right field corner there and it didn't seem like a great location uh and and here comes mr douglas there was there were several foul balls that were hit that hit off the wall and were about 10 feet eight to you know five to ten feet in where you can't reach them because if you go over the wall security will kick you out right 
So there's a danger factor. Well, let, here. let's clear that up. If you fall over the <laughs> if wall, if you fall over, thank if you. you fall, oh. you, they, you go back to your seat and 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 are told to stay up there for the rest of batting <laughs> practice. If you go over the wall, in the sense of, uh, an assisted fall, if you will, but we right. call it jumping the wall, uh, you go home and uh, you're banned from the stadium for a year and wow. MLB has made it a yeah. felony and they now ban you from all 30 stadiums if you run on the track wow. or go on the grass so even yes. during batting practice even during batting practice because yeah i guess that's a danger to the players yeah. uh, well it's also a liability you could get hurt you yeah. know yeah. Yeah, while it may seem fun to run on the on the grass there's a time place for anything but if you do it illegally and a ball hits you now they have to worry about you being hurt so uh, you know that and also puts the players at risk too and so then how did you meet him? What happened? So, so Douglas, you know, it's like a game of chicken because there's this ball sitting out there and, and all these <laughs> people have come to get said foul ball. And, you know, it, there's creativity involved. And my brain was not evolved at that time to think in this way. But Douglas first tried leaning over and couldn't get it. And then he grabbed somebody's poster. It was handed to me. I didn't grab it. Let's, let's okay. clarify that. <laughs> she was like, she there did a, say, hey, would this work? And there was voluntary assistance. So there are those working with you, and there are those <laughs> there are definitely, against you. Yeah, there are some against me. And uh, he was uh, able to roll the ball back with the tip of the poster. A rolled up poster? It was not no, a poster. No, just the it tip. Was a, it was, a, it was a, actually, it was rolled up. It was kind of like a poster paper, poster not board. board. It wasn't yeah. firm, so I had to kind of turn it into like a half cone shape. To make it rigid enough to get the ball to move because wow. i think it was four or five attempts where the paper just kind of tickled the ball and i was like this isn't going to work and then i tied a little tighter and then i got it to move a little bit and uh, it was i normally have a three and a half three uh three quarter foot range off the wall that i can reach and this ball was at least four and a half five feet i mean it was out there yeah. there was no chance david what did you think when you first met douglas and what he was doing i was like you thought I was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, who's going to, what if he falls? All I was thinking is, what if he falls? Yeah. Well, were you happy for him or were you kind of mad like I was supposed to get that ball? No, I was not like I was supposed to because I was like five to ten feet to his left. Yeah. And then he. Yeah, so you were pretty impressed, right? Yeah. But then afterwards, which is a really you know good place to, to ask Douglas a question too, and 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 I had this happen when we were down at Petco Field too, you know one of the dads who believes that that said ball is entitled to him, got a little bit in your face, right? He got foul. Let's just but, call yeah. it what it is. Wow. <laughs> he he he, uh, yeah. he was beyond the drunk uncle at a wedding. Yeah, this mm. guy was just <laughs> crude. And um, so what's that like? Yeah, for you, I'd be interested to hear. Yeah, when when. You're just doing your passion. You're getting creative. I mean, nobody else thought of what you did. You are risking falling or whatever else, even though I'm sure it was calculated. Well, t 20 years and I haven't fallen, so I'm, <laughs> I'm grateful for that. Wow. Uh, they've taken wagers when that day is going to happen, but who knows. But, you know, is, uh, ball hawking, I don't really call it ball hawking. I, I, it is what it is by that label. Uh, it keeps me in the game. I mean, I, I love baseball, and uh, a lot of people say baseball is just boring. I'm like, well, you don't understand baseball like I understand baseball. Uh, showing up for BP and, and running after baseball, there, there's an adrenaline. I mean, it's a drug. It really is a lot of fun. Uh, and this guy, uh, you don't – it was ironic. He actually accused me or uh, uh, thought that I was example by, by definition of what he said. But um, he went off ugly style and i was like really dude you're, you're gonna go like that and you're talking like that in front of kids and you're you wow. know so does that throw you off your game for a bit um i've learned to shake it off i mean at first many many moons ago i mean the, there's the unsung role of the give the ball to the kid uh, if the kid has a chance i've i've given thousands of balls away and uh i've been shamed into giving balls away and i i think it is what it is you know it, it comes with the territory i i don't want to be that guy that is accused of pushing kids or oh he's so rough you know if, yeah. if a kid's got an opportunity i'm going to give him every chance he has if not i do help kids and i you know if, the, if, the, if there's a ball destined for a child i'm, I'm going to do what i can to put a smile on a face yeah and but, i appreciate you know it's often overlooked the power of the, that you walked away from that gentleman that for all the right reasons holding a kid in your hand and not a lot of people think it's okay to abuse another person or use foul language and i'm happy that you exemplified walking away thank you 
Um, and, and that stood out because, you know, as batting practice ended, and I happened to get a ball at the end, David was he was looking a little defeated, and thankfully I got one. But but what did you think, David, when you got to your seats and there was there was Doug sitting right in front right of you? Right in front of me. I <laughs> was like, okay. Did you think he was going to get your ball? Because you, you chose yeah. that seat on purpose. Oh, you chose that seat? Yeah. Really? How oh. ironic is that? Oh yeah, he researched ahead of time, right? Tell, what was yeah. what was your thought about those seats? I thought that they would be like amazing for home runs. Uh huh. Nice, nice. And then that's where you guys all met and everything. And I do want to take one moment to say, if you're watching us on Facebook.com/slash Richard Listens, thank you. Uh, check in, leave a comment or a question. We try to get to it. I can't see all the names of people joining us, but. I do see our good old friend AJ Collier's checked in. I see our friend Ben Jamin is checked in. Hi, Ben. Ben was with me in the in the moments leading up to not getting here, helping me fix the backrest of my wheelchair. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. And uh, AJ said uh, a comment from when we had uh, Caitlin on. He said, uh, so I'm not fat. I'm just preparing for when the <laughs> SH... TF the blank hits the fan so uh way to be prepared AJ so yes leave your comments or questions we'll definitely try to get to them and uh David so what got you interested in watching these YouTube videos and and the whole phenomenon of catching baseballs during batting practice and catching foul balls all I did was like click on the video but why did you even go to the video because it was like June, and I thought I want I want to see how this how this guy gets his ball because I had never gotten a ball since this season, and I was like, whoa, how does he do it? I want to try. That's amazing. And then you were proactive and started watching videos and got your dad to take you to games and put all that into action, and then you got to meet like one of the utmost professionals in America at that exact thing. How amazing. And is there, yeah, it's Douglas, is there a certain etiquette? Like, well, you said you don't want to call it ball hawking. What should we call it, like uh, ball seekers? Or is there like a, <laughs> I, I, I call it just getting into the game. Is, I mean, Is there a certain etiquette? Do you run into other people like yourself, and is there an etiquette amongst yourselves? Well, uh, I... I'm an old-fashioned kind of guy. I mean, I was just raised to treat people with respect, and they'll treat you the same. If not, you walk away, which is what I did. The old me would have wanted to battle back and, you know, see who's uh, more macho. But I was like, you know what? There's too many kids involved. It's not worth it. Uh, etiquette in baseball, um, it, it goes – it's a, it's a wide spectrum. A lot of people say, oh, a kid gets the ball. If a kid is – got to get the ball then he'll get the ball if not it's not the kid's ball but that's per se uh if you get hit by a ball and that i'm a very firm believer i don't care who you are if the ball hits you that's your ball i mean you, you you're wearing it and uh i've i was over at um turner field last year uh, on the last uh, homestand and uh we were sitting it, it was a three-hour rain delay it was almost midnight and my son and i were just uh, sitting over by the dugout and uh i was just trying to get Nick Marcakis to give me a ball. Hey, Nick, hey, Nick. <laughs> and it was I the like sixth or seventh inning. I think there's a picture on, on my page of the kid. And uh, I uh, I asked Nick finally to give me a ball, and he gets the ball, and he throws me a knuckleball right at me. But unfortunately, it dropped about five feet and hit a kid about eight years old right in the chest. Oh, no. And I felt so bad. I was first, I, I, if I wouldn't have asked for the ball, the kid would have gotten hit. Well, the ball ricocheted to the left, and I, I'm I'm – going over to get the ball for the kid and this older guy gets the ball he goes oh it's my dude what are you doing that that ball goes to the kid he goes why i said he got hit by the ball that's his ball I and mean, you gotta give mm. it back yeah it is and he was he was kind of upset and i'm like dude give me the ball so i took it and when i went over and i gave the kid the ball and he was in shock his dad was like is he okay you know i'm no he'll be fine I, you know nick saw what happened he was devastated i mean because right. he threw the ball uh well i'm sitting there you know talking with the kid and all of a sudden about three minutes later here comes the bat boy with the brand new Nick Marcakis bat for the kid. Wow. And I was like, why well, I should have kept the ball. <laughs> right. But I'm like, dude, you got a ball and a bat. And I'm like, dude, right on. I said, and I took a picture with him and he was really, really happy. It got the tears away. But uh, if the ball wouldn't have hit the kid, then, you know, 
if I wouldn't have caught it, you know, it would, even though it was intended for me, if I didn't catch it, I'm not going to complain about it. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, so in a way, it's kind of like baseball is that there are some unwritten rules. A lot of unwritten rules, and a lot of people seem to make up their own. <laughs> Right. Uh, but in the ball hawk world, I mean, there are some people that are very, very aggressive uh, ball hawks, and uh, I kind of tend to stay away. And there's a couple that I know, and they they know me. It, it, it's kind of strange because I mean, uh, I was in the limelight before, and I'm I kind of walked away. And uh, now I, I walk into a stadium, no matter what stadium I'm at, people know me by name, which is kind of weird. And by that. Angels guy or by but Douglas? that was before. Well, it was that Angels guy. Okay. Now it's hey Doug, and I look and my son's like, who's that? Like, I have no idea. So uh, it's getting around, but no, uh, how the name came evolved. Um, it, I, I used to have long hair, so I was always known as the long hair guy by the foul pole. Oh, that's funny. And I always told him, if I cut my hair, you guys aren't going to know who I am. And uh, well, I had uh, cut the hair and. Switch locations, and uh, you know it is a science. You have to know where to go there to, for who, which ball you want. You have to go. And uh, my son and I do road trips, and everyone in every single stadium that we've been to, hey, you're that Angels guy. I'm like, what are you talking about? You don't know. Who, I've never been here. Yeah, we know all about you over wow. left left field by the pole. And I'm like, oh, this is real strange. And then we went to um, uh, City Field for the All Star game. We were there for uh, for the Futures game. And that's the other side of the world to me. I'm like, just no one's going to know me. And within 10 minutes of getting inside of the stadium, hey, it's the Ed Angels guy. Wow. And I'm like, I, I kept walking. I was like, there's no way. I wasn't wearing Angels gear, you know. Well, that sounds nice. Did you have your Angels gear on? Not even I don't that. remember having wow. an Angels shirt on. And I just heard, hey, Angels guy. And I was like, I turned around. I'm like, hey, we have, like, hey, we're Anaheim, right? And I was like, how do you know me? And they're like, no, we all, we all know about you. And I was, I was hoping it was all good, but, you know. He didn't say anything bad, so I guess it was okay. But when I when I got home from that road trip, I'm like, you know what? I need to to see if this this name is available. And I went on Facebook and I typed it in. I'm like, hey, I guess that's me now. And I became that Angels guy. And uh, and now you have it on Instagram and Twitter. I'm on Instagram you haven't and Twitter. I haven't, yet, I haven't embraced but, it yet. But it, you've it's got new it. to me. It, it really is new to me. Because I mean, I it, I have fans that I do not even know about. Yeah. And and to uh, you know baseball. It is a sport, but it's it's about family, and that's why it's America's favorite sport is because I call it my baseball family, and I got family that I see every summer, you know, and it, it's hard because winter's like, you know, I, I, it's my regular family. And then right. summer comes along, I got thousands of friends, you know, in every stadium, which is really a lot of fun. How about you, David? Are you a big fan? Not really. You're I'm, not a fan of Doug's? Not yet. I'm not really a fan, I would say. I'm a friend. Oh, oh there you go. There you yeah, go. Well, like to his that. credit, I mean, look, here's this guy competing with you in batting practice, and within five minutes of meeting him, I went to get you a bobblehead, and what, what were you and Doug doing? We were trying to get autographs. No, you were trying to get autographs. <laughs> what? I believe, I believe, and I assisted you, and I said, you want autograph? This is what you need to do. Yeah. And so how many autographs did you get? Yeah. I got three. There you go. That's a good start. Who, who were they? I don't really remember. You don't? Do you have the ball with you? They were on the Padres? Oh. No, I don't. Oh. Oh. Were they the Padres? No, this was the Angels, right? Oh, the okay. bullpen? It was the Angels yeah. bullpen. Right? It was the Angels bullpen, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think one of them was, uh, wow, you're making me go way back. Um, but three think, autographs yeah, is pretty Three good. autographs one of, and one two balls. One of them balls. was Kenyon Middleton, maybe? Yes. yes. And then Cambridogian. It wasn't Cam. It wasn't Cam. Then if it wasn't Cam, it was Bud Norris that signed. Could have been. Yeah. yeah. And then there was Mickey Calloway. That was from the Indians. So, yeah. yeah, you got him yeah. an Indian signature. Wow. Yeah, that's right. That's so, right. Three signatures and two balls by the time I got back with a bobble. Wow, head. amazing. <laughs> and so, Michael, what do you think about all of this? He was at Petco Field. So I, what did you think, Michael, when you saw David playing catch with the Major League? Um, it was just really fun for me seeing my brother enjoy himself, and I kind of got into it too, helping him out. I got quite a few balls that like kind of had a shared collection. After that, it's just really fun, and like I didn't really like going to baseball b baseball games. It's not like my favorite sport, but going to baseball games has become a lot more fun after like trying to get the balls and everything. Yeah, but, it's like a game within a game, like Doug was saying earlier. It's a it's like you're like almost like a 
like the mindset of an athlete when you become you are an athlete yeah you, you have to be because yeah. you know there's a lot of run involved a lot of thinking and and uh, if you're not physically able to you're not going to get a ball but the, you, you almost are like a like a an athlete if you will and uh don't worry you'll come to baseball games with me i'll, I'll get you some uh, experience yeah. i do a lot of coaching while i'm on uh, while i'm while i'm ball hawking during bp i help a lot of people I, I, it's easy to get a ball and give it to somebody but to teach them how to get a ball i, I think that's like my biggest reward is because i'm creating a, a fleet of ball seekers out there that are gonna you know take away more balls from the actual rough ball hawks because they now know how to do it right and that's that's more fun than to just give a kid a ball i mean even though i still give them away it's it's a lot of fun but to teach them is is much more fun now i remember when i was way younger one technique i saw was i don't know if you used it or i'm sure you've seen it the it's like kind of like a cup with like a like rubber around the edge of the cup attached to a rope that it's just enough to like drop over a ball and pick it up off the grass you over the wall. Ball retrieving systems. Oh, okay, yeah, yes, yeah. ball retrieving right, systems yeah, that, <laughs> that are a little bit more elaborate than the poster you spoke of. Um, well, um, in Atlanta, my son and I were there, and we saw we we knew that there's devices out there, and I saw a guy had uh, kind of looked like a, a, a tape cardboard thing. And he was picking up balls. I'm like, you know what? We need to go to Lowe's after the game, and, and we can make our own. So we ended up getting a, a roll of duct tape and some kite string, or heavy-duty kite string or, or, or whatever. And I made a little triangle, and I taped it into itself. And then I taped a string um, in, in a three formation on the inside of the tape roll because the ball would slip right through. But I put in um, string doubled up and then taped it on the inside of it so that if you drop it just enough the ball will stay and yeah. then you just pull it up and then of course you just wrap it in around the tape and we started using that at at um at turner field and uh we were at uh, suntrust this year and they are not allowed anymore what they are not allowed any yeah. because they're losing of, too many baseballs or what um i have no idea i have no idea but i know that they are not allowed at suntrust uh it at and they actually sell devices, a weighted cup if you want a string. Wow. What? And they have a little leash that you can put on your wrist so that you don't lose it. And uh, I remember I was at a, in right field, and all of a sudden I saw a ball go be, in the batter's eye. And you see, it, it, like, people fishing for bass. I mean, they're just on both sides throwing their cups <laughs> to try to drag the ball over so they can pick it up. It was like six mm -hmm. or seven guys shooting for one ball. It was really wow. funny to watch. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, some, some stadiums don't allow them. Um, I know at Angel Stadium, it's anything that anybody can buy that can bring to the stadium. But you can't use blankets anymore. That's been banned. Uh, you can accidentally put your backpack down to stop it, but they kind of fret on that. Um, my my favorite, when my kids were younger, you know, David's right about that age, uh, I developed a thing called the crane. And I would get my son from his ankles and hold him over the wall. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> and he'll pick up the ball and I'd bring him back. Well, they ended that real quick. That's like but, a uh, Michael Jackson balcony move there. <laughs> almost, almost. Yeah. Uh, I remember my, my oldest was above the bullpen and I saw a ball. I'm like, hey, Spencer, come here. And, and I got him the ball. And he was excited. And my, my son was by two older gentlemen who were a little foul. And he, they just were going, oh, there's, you know, there's a right way and a this that way to do it and he kind of looked over and go that's my dad by the way and, <sighs> and it, it was epic because they they kind of toned ghost white real quick like oops maybe we shouldn't be talking like that in front of kids you yeah know? no doubt and uh, right or wrong way you know there was no written rule back then that you can't you know hang your kid over the wall to get a ball uh, he was safe i'm not going to drop my child i mean he was maybe 30 pounds it's easy but now at Angel Stadium, it's it's funny. They're like, "Oh, I'll hold you by the feet." You can't do that anymore. It's got to wow. be unassisted. And um, no, the, I know at Petco, they they, I don't know if they allow devices or not, but it, it's fan friendly. So a lot of balls leave the leave the field. It's probably yeah. one of the best places. They to got go a get beach balls. and a park back there. You can run around the sandbox wow. and there and they comes got a, a ball. wiffle ball field too. You can go yeah. play wiffle ball. Oh, out there. that's awesome! Yeah, Petco's amazing. Wow, that's Absolutely really cool. Amazing. I believe also in Great American Ballpark, they also have a 
with football field. I was at the Great American Ballpark, and I don't remember the Wolf Ball Field. But where I, is that? Where is this one? Cincinnati, Cincinnati? Cincinnati Reds. All yeah, right, yeah. look at this. Yeah, Peter Peter okay. Sound. I think I was wrong. Yeah, we got four balls for uh, for during the um, the Futures game. We ended up with four balls and one. Wow. I, it was it was funny. I wasn't paying attention. We were in left field, which is rare for me because I normally go to right field. And I, I, maybe I wasn't paying attention. I, I wasn't focused. All of a sudden, I heard the crack of the bat. And I, I luckily, I looked up just in time, and a, a liner came in at me. It probably wasn't 40 feet off the ground. Wow. It just came right at me. And I just put the glove up to protect myself, and there's the ball. Wow. I was kind of in shock for a little bit. And my son's like, hey, way to go, Dad. And everybody started clapping. I'm like, oh, I just caught that ball. <laughs> so, Doug, I got to know. So you've there's some... Some balls mean more than others, right? Some oh. catches. So, so I know you mentioned you caught a big one from Albert Pujols. Maybe, maybe share you know your thoughts leading up to that one, or or some of the. Well, big I'm ones. going to reflect with David on that. Uh, we used to, we've sat all over the stadium, and um, I had an injury that caused me to switch locations, and I sat by the foul pole, and I hated it. I wasn't in 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 the the home run zone, if you will. So when the seats came available for me to pick my seats, I went back and tried to get my original seats back, and two of them were already gone. I was like, what's going on? Are you talking season tickets? Season tickets, okay. yes. And the guy, my friend from the stadium, he's like, dude, I, I'm sorry I took your seats. You want them? I'm like, what happened? He goes, somebody took my seats. I'm like, don't worry about it. They're yours. Take them. In fact, just take all four and move up one row. I'm, I'm good with it. And I'm looking for seats, looking for seats, and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I really don't want to sit you know, by the foul pole on the opposite side where I want to sit. Right. And um, I saw there was like a, in 258, right above the bullpen, one row up, there's about 12 seats and six seats behind it. And the guy comes up, oh, I'm, these are all mine. I'm like, oh, so you're a scalper. Okay, fair enough. I'm not a scalper. I'm like, nobody needs all these seats. You're a scalper. And he goes, they're, they're an upgrade. I'm like, you're upgrading from where? You're in the outfield. He goes, I sit behind the Diamond Club. I'm like, that's not an upgrade. You're a scalper. Goodbye. So I, I, I look over to 260, which is the corner where, where we're sitting, and I saw four seats available. I'm like, I rub my eyes. I'm like, that, that can't be possible. So I run over there, and I see the seats are available, and there was not a single rep anywhere there. So I, I saw a guy in right field run over, and I'm like, I'll take him. I'm done now. I knew those were great seats, and the front row was amazing. But right over the bullpen tunnel, you get to talk to a lot of players. Now, one second though, like put this in perspective. You I'm, physically go to the park and pick out your well, they call tickets? yeah. It's called pick a seat. When okay. the, when people let go of their seats, seats become available. And there's a day and a time you there's go. There's a day and a time you go. Correct. Oh, now okay. it's now it's done yeah. online. It's no longer. Oh, okay. Where you this come was back in the day before back online. Day. Okay. Well, leading to the long story to the to the okay. glory. Yeah. That year, I got those seats. I never in my wildest dreams imagined that those seats would pay off. Well, we're at the um, All Star game, and that's right when we got Albert Pujols. So we were like, "Hey, Albert Pujols, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun." My son and I are in Kansas City, and we went to FanFest, and I see a uh, uh, a Cardinals jersey. Pujols sitting there up there. Guy had five ninety nine, four ninety nine, three ninety nine, and he's starting to go down in price. And I'm like, hey, I, I, I think I can get this guy. So I go, I'll give you a hundred bucks. He goes, are you kidding me? I said, look, I got to change the patches. I mean, he's an angel now. I don't want a Cardinals patch on it. So he's like, no, it's not for sale at that price. I'm like, all right, fine. So my son and I are going. I'm like, no, I, I, this guy's going to give me that jersey. That's my jersey. So I go back and I'm like, dude, I can only give you seventy five now because he wants some baseball cards. And the guy's looking at me, you're out of your mind. He goes, give me the 100, it's yours. Fair. Now I got a jersey. Well, about two weeks later, Albert, uh, at the end of the playing the uh, Oakland A's, and we're getting hammered. My son decided to go to the to the dugout, and I'm out there all by myself. And I had some friends. I'm like, hey, why don't you guys sit with me? And it was a dead game. We were done, but I didn't want to sit in traffic. Albert Poole comes to the plate. And I knew that he had had uh, 12 years with 30 home runs. And this would have been his 30th home run. So I'm thinking, this ball is going to be special. I'm staying. And crack of the bat. And, I, and one thing with the ball hawk, you're watching the ball off the bat every time. I see this ball coming. I'm like, oh, this is mine. This is mine. And it takes one hop into the into the, the floor, off the wall, ricochet, and right into my glove. Oh, my God. I'm I'm ecstatic. I'm like, hey, it's 30th home run, right on. All of a sudden, security's coming left, right. I'm thinking, what did I do? I thought I did something wrong. And I look up at the scoreboard, 
and it says stand musical 475. I'm thinking, oh my God, I think I just got something real special. And that was the ball that tied Stan Musial, who was Albert Pujols' mentor coming wow. up. So that ball I knew had more value to him than any of his home run balls to date. <laughs> and um, I was thrown back. I'm like, what do I do? And what security comes and takes me. And that actually happens to be a record night for me, too, because my son and I had uh, – we, we have fun with it. That ball was number 21 for the day. Whoa. So we had hawked 21 baseballs that day. So it was incredible. So that's a day you'll never forget. And oh, this absolutely is, And not. this is, creates memories from you and your son. Oh, well, ab- both my boys were there. And it's funny. My phone starts blowing up. Did you get the ball? I, th- I think your dad got the ball. And um, I actually uh, told him, you know, we, we're going to give it back. But uh, I got I to gotta talk to my kids. So we bring the kids down. We're, at the, we're waiting, you know, for them to do what they got to do. And I told my kids, look, I said, they don't want the ball. They're saying we can keep it. I said, it's up to you guys. I said, it'll be the holy grail of our ball collection. It'll be in the middle. We'll know that's special. Or do we give it back? And in a nanosecond, both my kids going, we're giving it back. And that made me proud. Because you know what? Certain balls, you you just give back. You know, Alex Rodriguez, I would have kept it too. (laughs) But the best part was, as we're waiting, my kids are just, you know, no big deal. They're, They're kids. All of a sudden, the door opens, and here comes Albert. Wow. And my my oldest son was just like, oh. he, he was frozen. And you can't pay for that. You know, you can pay for meet and greets, but to be genuine, that was amazing. And you got to hand Albert the ball? I handed him the ball, and I told him, I talked to him in Spanish, and I told him this ball was more important. We know it's more important for you than for us, and, and we're more honored to be able to give you the ball and knowing that it's going back to you than to keep it for ourselves. And he was very appreciative, and I'm like, do you mind if we take a picture? And he was already starting to put the kids together. He's super, super nice guy. And I told him, I said, you know what, 500's coming along. Just, you know, kind of lean it to the left a little bit. And he goes, I'll see what I can do. Right. <laughs> and uh, I almost got 600. It was close, but, you know. Wow. I, I know that uh, if I catch another Albert Pujols ball and he asks for it, uh, I won't hesitate. I'll be more than happy to say we meet again. And uh, here's another ball for you. But uh, Such yeah. a great story. Oh, it, it's amazing. And that's why, you know, when David's like, oh, he picked those seats. I was lucky enough to get those seats. And, I, you know, and uh, when you come to the game, just know that I'll, I'll work right out with your dad. You can sit in the front row. Wow. That way you can have a chance wow. instead of sitting behind me and hoping I miss the ball. Because I don't miss many when they come that way. So, Dr. Richard, I want to get into the psychology of things for a second. But first... I do want to have a conversation with young David here because we have him in the studio. It's a big baseball show. And uh, thanks, everyone, checking in on Facebook. Like I said, I can't see all your names, but hello, Christina Dahl, my friend. And there's Joseph Medina checking in. Hi, Joseph. And uh, like I said, I can't see you all, so if I didn't see your name, don't feel bad. David, the baseball playoffs are here. I'm a Cubs fan, so I'm very happy. So if you're watching this... uh, (laughs) Actually, you know, the funny thing about me running late was I got to listen to the end of the game on the radio. Uh huh. Coming Astro here. Game? No, the Cubs game. I'm a oh. Cub there playing uh, the uh, the Nationals today. Yeah. So, David, tell me your playoff predictions this year. I definitely think that. Get into the mic there. I definitely think that it's going to be the Indians and Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> and so, why do you think that? Because the Dodgers, it's you can't. I've been to many games this year. People, it's not like people leave in the ninth inning. They know that they're gonna win. They're down two, three. You know, you trust that they're gonna win. And they do a lot and of he, times. You were at a very big comeback game, right? Weren't they down several to the Giants? Yeah. And what about the Indians? What's the special sauce that they have that you think they're going to get back to the World Series? Yay. You know that 22 ga- win streak? 22 what? Game 22 win streak. game win streak? Yeah. What was that? <laughs> that? That was pretty amazing, right? Yeah. And they've got one of his players from the Mets, Jay Bruce. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Did- what about do you think it's going to be pitching or hitting that takes the takes team all the way? I have no clue. No clue at all? Yeah, because the Indians have both. Right. Well, yeah. the Dodgers also have both. 
So would you rather be at a game that's like a pitching duel, one to nothing, and almost a no hitter? Or would you rather be at a ten to eight game with six home runs? I think a ten to eight game. Those are fun. Yeah. The one to nothing games. By the time you eat your hot dog, it's like the sixth inning already. Yeah, but they're game. exciting. Yeah. But yeah. they are exciting. Yeah. One of the balls David got from Canley Jansen versus the Reds. They were down by three and. Seeger came up in the eighth or ninth, and I think yeah. hit a grand slam. And 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 Canley wasn't even warming up. They were putting in somebody mm-hmm. like Triple yeah, A prospect, yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> he got to cheer on Canley Jansen, and I, they threw him the ball. Who are some Tony your, Romo was still on the team? Who's some of your favorite baseball players? That's a hard one. That's an honest question. Take your time. An yeah. honest answer because I can't pick one. I just yeah, love it's, baseball. It's hard. Yeah, I can pick. The basically all the pitchers on the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I guess we'll hope that they have a comeback year next year, right? And yeah. They had a lot of injuries, unfortunately, this year, but uh, next year they'll be back strong. Yeah. Yeah. He got to see an awesome game last year. What did What did Syndergaard do? And you saw him play the Dodgers last he year. He hit two home runs. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> they won two to one. <laughs> he pitched well and hit two home runs. That's how much we depend on our pitchers. And now, Michael, you said you're not a huge baseball fan, but what's your sport of choice and favorite players? Um, it has to be soccer, and my favorite uh, player has to be either Kevin De Bruyne or Sergio Aguero. What teams are they on? They're on Manchester City. Oh, okay. You're you're taking a real deal overseas there. Not even yeah. rooting for America. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, unbelievably, we only have like a few minutes left of the show, but Dr. Richard, I wanted to get a little perspective from you. What is, you know, every, we desire the home run ball and the foul ball. You know, what's the psychology behind that, bringing the kids to the game and just wanting that ball? It's like, why can't we just go to the game and watch it? Why do we... What's the psychology behind that? Oh, it's a stumper right there. I can answer that. Yeah, I don't know. David sounded like he wanted to answer. Do you want to answer, David? Go for it. Yeah. Basically, it just makes it, like, excited. Oh, I got a ball. I got a ball. Instead of some people just on their iPad or, like, their phone just saying, we bought these tickets for nothing. We'll just look at our phones and not do anything. Yeah, that's the worst yeah. when you're at a game and people are just looking at their phones. Getting hit by balls because they're not paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just want to, I mean, you know, I, I know I'm supposed to, you know, be in my professional hat with a psychology hat. And we realize that not all our listeners are baseball fans or love baseball, although I'm more and more surprised by both men and women that have been raised around baseball and after hearing our show share with me like how much the Dodgers mean to them or how much going to a Mariners game meant to them growing up and they still then pass it on Mm -hmm. and for me you know very interesting as a parent who works real hard this is what David wanted for his birthday was to go see the Padres it's arbitrary we don't I'm not we're not raised out here we don't know the players and he was able to make a connection with everybody from the bullpen coach to the bullpen player to the the security guards to the staffers who've been working around the stadium. And it was such a wonderful experience of inclusion. And to me, that's what sports are supposed to be, that you want to be like the players, you look up to the players, you want to do anything to get a connection, let alone a ball, the thing they play with. right? Mm -hmm. And so to not only get to catch a ball or catch one when someone hits one, but to play catch with them, you feel like you're a part of the team. Absolutely. And so you feel important, your yes. importance of being in the stadium. Well, that that's what I was saying, you know, I, that I can answer that perfectly. It puts you in the game and, you know, and the baseball family connection. Uh, you can be in a stadium you've never been to and you're treated like family because of the game, you know. And then you get a ball, you get to take part of the game with you. And that, that you live forever. Even if you give the ball away, you still know that you got that ball and you were part of history. Yeah, it's a great thrill. You know, there's a a big park behind the buildings where I live, just, you know, where there's a bunch of baseball, casual baseball fields. Mm -hmm. But once in a while, like, there, a baseball will roam up to where I park. And that's exciting. Like, I found a baseball (laughs) from (laughs) the baseball field. Like, was it intended for me? Is somebody leaving it? Right. But but Mm -hmm. it is a very exciting thing. So we got to wind down here. So first of all, Doug, um, you know, I know you're not very active on Twitter and Instagram, but you got the handle, so... It's at 
that that, that angels, angels guy. guy. I'm I am on Facebook. That angels guy, and I do like I said, I just started growing it. Um, I know that next season uh, I do a lot of giveaways. I mean, I, I I get a lot of balls, so I give a lot of balls yeah. away. I I get a lot of merch because I'm a season ticket holder. So I mean, I, I give I get like pizza coupons or I get you know chronic taco coupons and I give a lot of stuff away and I'll just post up saying hey come to my seat tap my shoulder it's yours so uh, I know that next season I'm going to start using Instagram a lot more uh, I intend to do more giveaways and you never know when David might find an empty free seat All right. so pay attention <laughs> yes. follow, follow me on uh, follow me on Facebook for now and, <laughs> and I'll let you know when I start doing the other uh, I'll post when I'm starting to use them but it's probably won't start until February when spring training comes along and I head out to the desert too amazing uh, and you know on balls. Twitter and Instagram people can also you know, reach out to you and ask questions if they want tips absolutely, from you and all that sort of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I think I changed them back over to that Angels guy. Uh, yeah, they are. Instagram. They're there. They are? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think it's one, the picture is me holding baseballs over my eyes. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. That's yeah, that was it. So, yeah. yeah, this is the guy. If you want the tips on how to get the foul ball, free the home tips, run I'm ball. Mad. Free tips, I'm Yeah, mad. they're free. He's yeah. not selling anything here. Not yet, not yet. So... <laughs> David, what final words do you have about everything we've been talking about today? That I can't wait to see the end of these playoffs and that... What do you hope for next summer? To go to more games and go to more stadiums. Nice. What's the favorite stadium you want to go to next year that you haven't been to yet? City Field, definitely. Ooh. You'll like it. Yes. <laughs> it's a fun stadium. Yes. Okay. I hear birthday chimes ringing there. <laughs> An and, expensive road trip. <laughs> and uh, Michael, what can you leave us with? Um, that even though I don't, I'm not a baseball player, or even like enjoy, I enjoy watching baseball. But it's not my favorite thing to do, but it has become one of my favorite things to do because of like catching the balls and everything. It really gets you into the game. Awesome. And, and Michael and David, how's it been watching your dad here live on TV? It's been fun. I've been uh, checking in uh, every maybe every other show. Enjoy yeah. seeing it. But what about being right here in the studio with him, David? What do you think? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. I think you guys are awesome, too. You guys did a great job. Yeah. And, and I got to say, like, you know, I'll, I'll give you the final word, Dr. Richard, but just the energy in this room, the way you're raising your sons is amazing. Doug, the way you speak and the way you're raising your sons, we didn't even get into the, the whole youth sports and what amazing athletes your sons are and I'll everything. I'd be more than happy to come back and talk. Yeah, we definitely got to do that. And, and stuff. But just all the, you know, the talking of family and good values and being kind to one another, entering this sort of conversation just always amazes me and I love it. So that's my final word on the day, Dr. Richard. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, that's what the ball fork should be. It should be family. It should be baseball. It should be play. It should be mentoring. And should be creativity and uh, excitement and sharpening your mental edge. So thank you all for tuning in to Richard Listens on Sports here at UBN Radio TV and Facebook.com Richard Listens. We'll be back in two weeks. And we're going to have Dr. Neil Smith, who is a sports psychologist that deals mainly with tennis and He's really worked with a lot of really amazing tennis players, so it's going to be a really great show. So we will see you here live in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Shows that